I hope this video finds you doing well today. Today we're going to have the opportunity to be able to explore the inner workings of a pipe organ. The instrument we're going to be looking at today is an instrument built by the Pelcher Company in the 1920s um, and is an electro-pneumatic action instrument. So we'll be able to go through, see how the inner workings work, how the air moves through the instrument, and how the instrument is able to produce the sounds that it produces. To begin our discussion, I wanted to show you the console of the instrument so that you could see some of the component parts that we're going to be talking about once we're in the chamber. This particular instrument has three keyboards and a pedal board, which basically consist of four different divisions on the organ. The top keyboard is the swell division, the middle keyboard the great division, and the bottom keyboard the choir division, and then the pedals have their own division as well. The swell, great, and choir divisions are all under expression, though parts of the great division are um, unenclosed. What this basically means is that the majority of the pipes in each of these divisions is contained within a box that has a set of shutters on it that can be opened and closed to basically increase or decrease the sound. We'll be looking at this a little bit more detail once we're in the chamber. This is a view of the organ from the organ, um, from the console, from where you would be sitting and playing at it. Now, this only represents a small portion of the pipes that make up this instrument. This is actually only two stops that are sitting on the grate division. The rest of the organ is located behind these pipes, and that's where we're going to be going next to be looking at the detailed mechanisms. We'll begin looking at this instrument by starting with the air supply. This is the blower that, when turned on, will fill the instrument with the air that is necessary for it to produce the tones that it produces. As the air um, passes through the blower, it goes up this pipe here and then enters into this wooden box, which is the primary wind chest for the instrument. The principal purpose of the wind chest is to regulate the pressure on the air so that the correct amount of air is passing through the pipes when they sound. This is done by a series of bricks which are located on to, in boxes on top of the, the wind chest which weigh it down and re help regulate the pressure that's there. This wind chest also has a series of escape valves on it, emergency valves, that if the wind pressure becomes too high and that the box becomes too filled with air, the valves open allowing excess air to escape. The back door that you see in this picture is where the blower was located. This is where we came from just a few minutes ago. Once the air it fills into the first primary wind chest, it's then distributed out to individual wind chests that are located under each division and helps regulate the air for each division. What we're seeing in front of us is the wind chest for the swell division. You can clearly see the boxes that are on top, and under inside each of these boxes are the bricks that we talked about that help weigh down the um, wind chest and help create the air pressure. Once the organ is turned on, these wind chests will fill and will expand. We will now see this. So now that the wind chest is filled with air, the organ is on and each of the pipes now have constant air pressure under them such that when the key is pressed to activate the pipe, the air will pass through producing the pitch. Once the organ has been turned on, every pipe in the instrument is under air pressure. However, the pipes will not sound until a valve that is located under each individual pipe is opened. These valves are controlled by two sets of primaries, a stop primary and a key primary. For each stop on the organ, there is a stop primary. And for each key on the organ, keyboards, there is a key primary. For a specific pipe to sound, the corresponding stop primary and key primary must both be activated for the valve to open and the air to pass through the pipe. The stop primary is activated when the draw knob on the console corresponding to that stop primary has been pulled. 
Once this has been done, the first condition for opening the valve has been met. The key primaries are activated when the individual keys are played on the organ. Once the corresponding key primary has been depressed, the key primary will activate. And assuming that the stop primary associated with it has also been activated, the valve will open, allowing air to pass through the pipe and the pipe to sound. We are now standing right on the other side of the series of pipes that we saw earlier in the picture from the view of the console. This is where the bulk of the organ resides. You'll see a series of stoppered pipes running down the middle as well as some open wooden pipes. These are the pipes of the pedal division which are unenclosed as they are able to speak out into the room where the instrument is located without any being obstructed by a box. We also see some metal pipes here to the side, which are some of the principal pipes in the great division that are unenclosed. Behind these metal pipes, you can see two boxes with louvers on them. The first one here, closest to the wall, is the great division, where the enclosed portion of the grate is located, and next to it is the choir division, if we come over here to the side, we can now see um, a portion of a box here up close. This is the swell division, which is also under expression in the box that we're looking at currently. We are now looking inside the choir box, where the choir division pipes are located. As we can see, we're seeing a variety of different pipes, some made of wood, some made of metal. The construction of the pipe, whether it is wood or metal, helps determine the unique sounds that each pipe makes. The length of the pipe determines its pitch, with longer pipes being a lower sound and shorter pipes being a higher sound. We can also see across the back wall here a series of pneumatic chimes. In some cases, organs will have some percussion aspects to them, as is example here, with the pneumatic chimes. Once the key is pressed, the pneumatic action will activate and strike the chime with a small hammer that you can see across the top here, which will allow it to sound. We are now looking at the outside of the choir division box. What we're seeing right now are the different louvers that are on the box that allow the instrument to be under expression. By opening and closing these wooden louvers, we're able to increase and decrease the sound, with the sound being more muffled when the louvers are closed and to see, speak out openly when they're open. You can see through the back panel here the chimes that we were looking at earlier. We will now close the louvers so you can see how they shut. At this point, the instrument would be speaking more softly. And if we open them back up, the sound would brighten. In addition to the material that the pipe is made up of and how it's cut, there are other factors that can impact the way that the pipe will sound and the different tone and timbres that are produced. In this particular instance, we are looking at a series of stoppered pipes, which have a stopper located in the top of the pipe that basically causes the air, once passing through the pipe, to pat make two trips through the pipe, once up and one down, and actually allows the pipe to sound as if it is twice the length that it is currently. This is one way in which organ builders are able to achieve a 16 foot tone using a pipe of only 8 feet in length. The stopper also creates a unique timbre that is unique to different pipes of this nature. We are now standing in the, the swell division box. From here we can see, similar to the choir division, an assortment of different wood, stoppered, and metal pipes that make up this particular division. One particular set of pipes of notes of note 
is the Vox Humana, which is located in this box in front of me. The Vox Humana produces a, a pretty sharp, bright tone, but by enclosing it in a box, some of the brighter characteristics of that tone are eliminated and allow it to sound as a fairly soft stop in the instrument. We can open the box, and it's a bit dark, but in there are the Vox Humana reed pipes. I would like to thank you for taking time out of your day to join us for this opportunity to explore the inner workings of the pipe organ. I hope you enjoyed this episode and will join us in the future for future episodes. Thank you and have a good day.